Hi, welcome to State Space Modeling with Tim. This is the second video of the series. In this video, we're going to be going through an example on how to develop a state space model for the following mechanical system. In the previous video, I introduced the state space model as two equations, two matrix equations, which can be seen down here. So without further ado, let's start with the problem. But before we can start with the problem, we need to develop an approach. And that approach is going to come exclusively out of our two equations here, particularly equation one. So first, um, I'm going to try to develop steps so that we can actually use them to solve this problem. Or we can work with the steps. We can develop the steps as we solve this problem. So let's start off with step one. And to see step one, we only need to look at the first part of the first equation, and that's x dot x dot means the first derivative of our the first derivative of our state variables okay so that means that tells us that we're going to need um, differential equations and fortunately enough our system our system here that we're working with has uh, differential equations we just have to define them for we just have to extract them from the problem for ourselves and to do that we're first going to have to draw a free body diagram because this is a mechanical system. Okay. So I'm just going to draw a free body diagram here. I should point it out. Free body diagram. This is important. Some can argue that it's not necessary, but I think for students who might find it difficult to solve problems like this on on the fly then they should start with just drawing the free body diagram it makes the problem way more simpler to analyze so all the forces in this system are interacting in the y direction and that's going to be very important moving forward okay so the first force is acting downward is this p force as a function of time and it's an external force the second force acting downwards is the actual mass of the box which is also acting downward. We can call this force F1, okay? And then the forces acting upward are the damper de denoted with C and the spring denoted with K. And we can show these forces like this. And we can say that C, the force of the damper is denoted as F1 and the force of the spring is denoted as F03. And this force is F2, sorry about that. Okay, so now let's define F1. F1 is the weight of the mass M. So this is simply mass times gravity. And gravity is the second derivative of the direction that this is acting on. The second derivative of displacement, which is Y. Okay, and then F2 is our damper, which is denoted as... Um, C, the first derivative of our displacement, and F3 is denoted as the force according to Hooke's law as Kx. So here it's going to be Ky. Okay, and Pt is Pt. It is not defined as anything. It's just an external force. Okay, so we've, we've given that. So how can we turn this into a singular differential equation? Well, we can simply say that we assume equilibrium and if we assume equilibrium then the forces are balanced the upward forces are balanced with the downward forces this means that the sum of forces going upward is of course the sum of the forces of y acting downward and then that simply means that we can come up with an equation now pt p of t plus F1 is equals to F2 plus F3. Okay, so now we can express this as a, as a differential equation. And then it, we can write P of T is, uh, sorry, plus M second derivative of Y is equals to C first derivative of Y plus K Y. Okay, so now we have our first derivative and then we can work from there. 
So what do we have to do next? So we can say now, step one is, I'm just gonna use a blue pen here. Step one, um, develop our DEs, and DEs stands for differential equation. Okay, and what, what would step two be? Let's look at, let's look again at our system, at, at our system of equations here. Okay, so we've we've used this as an idea of how to approach this problem. Uh, the second the second thing we need to do is look at um, very we we need to decide on um, state variables, and that would be for x. Okay, state variables are how can I describe this? State variables are the ones with the derivatives. What are being what is being differentiated here? That's a hint on how we can see them. It's not necessarily the right way, the right way to define it. In the first video, we defined it as this as the smallest number of um very a set of variables that can define a system entirely. But that example, that definition doesn't exactly give us an idea here. So here's a hint: state uh, state variables. Are the derivatives so here what are our derivatives our derivatives are y that's why that's being der derivated so we can say step two is identify our derivatives and I'm gonna use a blue pen here okay identify state variables sorry from putting this very close to that and I think I should move that. And I'm just gonna try to move this here. It can be a bit to that side. Hopefully it doesn't uh, jumble. Okay, and then, so now we need to identify our state variables. Okay, so let's say it's y. And I want to define my state variables in terms of x here so that we can be able to have a bit of uh, continuity and it's easy to identify what our state variables are and I will say something like and I think I will use green here let x1 equals to y that's my first state variables and because we are using y so that is gonna be our state first state variable and then we can say let x2 be equals to sorry I'm just gonna move this a bit down x2 is equals to the first derivative of y. It's going to be dy dt. And this is just y dot. Okay, notice um, th this is also equals to x1 dot. That's something worth noting. Okay, so our third one is going to be, no, I think that should do it. Um, we should have x2 dot as well. If we're going to have x2 dot, we're going to have x2 dot. That, and we're going to have that x2 dot is going to be d squared y dt squared, which is going to be equals to y double dot, which is going to be x1 double dot. But we don't have to write that down. We, remember, for our for our x1 dot matrix which we gave here it's only x it's only one dot so we don't need two dots on our axis so now we have this so wh what do we do with this we need to come up with equations for x1 dot and x2 dot so look at this here we already have x1 dot if i write this in in let me go with red if I write this in red, we have x1 dot is just equals to x2. Okay, but what about this one? Can we express this in terms of x1 or x2? No, not directly. So we need to find a way to express this, but we already have an equation waiting for us to express this. Okay, so let's say we want to remove this p of t. We want to express it in terms of something we already have here. And what, what we already have here is our vector u, and that's our unit vector. P, we can treat it as our unit, as, a, as an input, because it's an external force. So that's, in a way, an input to the system. So let's, and we say 
let u equals to p of t. That should make life a bit more easier. And now we can rewrite our equation here. I can denote it as 3. And then we say 3 here is u plus m. And now I give this one as d squared y dt squared is equals to c dy dt plus k y and now we can use these state variables we've introduced and apply them into this equation so u stays the same m obviously stays the same and d squared y dt squared is now our x dot x2 dot which is going to be equals to c dy dt we discussed that's our x2 plus k x1 that's our y y is x1 okay so now we make x dot 2 the subject x dot 2 is equals to okay what do we have here we have c dot x2 plus k x1 minus u and that's all multiplied by 1 over m okay so this one can extend so it therefore goes without saying that x2 dot is expressed by and i want to give this in, in that order so I'll say k over m x1 plus c over m minus 1 over u oh sorry 1 over m multiplied by u okay so looking back here we see we have found our x dot we have expressed our x dot in terms of x and u that's what we've done here so we can look at it like this um, isolating this we can say x1 dot is equals to and if you look at it here we did discuss that x1 dot is equals to x2 and x2 dot we just copy this one here and I will I think I will literally just copy that there and we put it here and then we have our our first equation it's not obvious but this looks exactly like x dot is equals to a x plus b u and we're going to write it in matrix form not so long uh, in not so long from now and then we have our other one which must be expressed in terms of y which is y is equals to cx plus du okay so y has to be expressed in terms of x and u so let's find let's see if there's a relationship somewhere here that at least expresses y in terms of any of the state variables and looking immediately we can see here y is just equals to x1 so we already have an expression for that so y is equals to x1 and this is our y is equals to cx plus du so we should be able to write this in matrix form so we can say now x1 dot x2 dot r equals to okay so x1 x2 x1 is just equals to x2 so if i wanted to multiply this with x1 so we say x1 this one's going to give us x1 that's going to be x2 this is this only has an x2 component which is mat, which is a coefficient of 1 and it doesn't have anything with a coefficient of x1 it has an x2 co 
coefficient that's why so i hope everyone remembers their linear algebra okay so the next one is x2 dot x2 dot is k over m that's the coefficient of x1 okay and then the coefficient of x oh sorry that was supposed to be the wonder why that wasn't there my mistake okay so that's going to be c over m and we can close that now and then we're going to have our coefficient of u which is going to be minus 1 over m uh, and this only applies for x2 for 0 for uh, x dot 1 which is this one it, there is no relationship of u so it, it is not working in terms it doesn't it doesn't require the input x dot one that's what that's the observation we can make from that okay and then we have this one as one over m and because we don't know what the value of u which is p of t is we just leave it as a matrix like this u or you can give it as p of t okay and then y because it's a function of uh, it's just uh, a function of x1 then we can just say it's 1 0 x1 and x2 which literally means the same thing as y is equals to x1 and just like that we have expressed our state space model by using all the th just by uh, following these steps okay I hope that made a lot of sense. And so what can we take from this? What does this tell us about our, our system? Remember we said that this vector, uh, this matrix here is called our system matrix. And as you can see, it has all the parameters of our matrix K, M, and C. And this one has our state variables. And this one has our first derivative of our state variables. So we, it tells us that the first derivative of our state of our state variables only has a relationship with x1 and not the input so the input can change but our x1 dot will not change and the output has no has no direct relationship with the output because there's no output here so our our output has no relationship with the input the input can change but our output will stay the same and our output is this displacement thank you for watching